Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're doing part three of my follow-ups database. If you haven't watched parts one and two, what are you waiting for? Go watch them. You'll find links down below in the description. You can click on and go watch those and come on back. In today's video, we're going to make it so that by default, when you add new follow-ups here in the follow-up form, the default value is yes for that. We'll make it also so that you don't see future items. If you got a follow-up for next month, you don't necessarily want to see it on this list, but we'll make a checkbox up here that you can see all. So by normally, you'll only see the ones that are current, right, that are due right now. But if you check that box on, you'll see all of them. Then we'll make some little buttons here to move follow-ups ahead so we can be more efficient in ignoring people. <laughs> Procrastination, folks. It's an art form. All right, you can just go on the list and say, okay, tomorrow, this one I'll do next week, this one I'll do next month, and so on. Learn about some go-to control, go-to records, and all kinds of cool stuff. All right, you ready? Here we go. And we are back for part three of the follow-up series. Hope you guys are enjoying. Now, if you got a bunch of stuff in here, which, by the way, it is possible to add follow-ups in here as well. You could pick the customer. You could type in, you know, call about whatever. Right? Just make sure you mark it a follow-up. In fact, in this form, it might be a good idea to make the default value for this checkbox yes. Right? Because then, if you add stuff in here, it'll automatically be marked a follow-up. Whereas in the other form, it's not. So here, we'll go to data. We'll set default value to yes. Right? If you add them from the follow-ups form, then you want that to be a follow-up by definition. If you go in through the customer form, right, you might just be marking contacts in here. Okay, when you add a new contact down here. All right. Okay, now we want to prevent seeing stuff in the future. Okay, I don't need to see stuff that I've got, you know, for next week. Like this is after the first of the year. Okay, so that's easy to do. Let's go into our follow-up queue, design view. Now down here for criteria, we're going to say less than or equal to today's date. Now, remember, if you've got times in here, then you got to remember that today's date is today at midnight, okay? So if you've got today at 5 p.m. in here, then that's not going to be less than or equal to today's date. So you could also say less than date plus one. That's going to be less than tomorrow at midnight. I'm assuming you don't have any midnight follow-ups, which I, I mean, most of us don't generally do. Or if you are using times, you could put less than or equal to now in here, like that, and then you won't see a follow-up that's scheduled an hour from now. I think I'm going to go with less than date plus one. I want all the follow-ups from today to show, but not stuff from tomorrow or in the future. Okay? So now if I close this... Save changes, yes, and I open up my follow-ups. I am not seeing, whoop, not seeing anybody in there now. What happened? I don't think I have any follow-ups in the past. Nope, these are all in the future. It's currently 1221, so I don't have any that are in the past. All right, let's set this one to 1220. Let's make this one 1219, and I'll make this one 124. Okay. Now let's take a look. Okay, much better. All right, close that. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not seeing anybody. Reopen it. And there we go. And that brings to mind, we could throw a requery button down here on the bottom. I like requery buttons. Because a requery button says, oh, I made some changes to the records in here. Refresh this page. Now, you can do it off the menu. You can hit F5. But a lot of times, users need that button just to, just to do it. Now, I'm going to cancel the wizard, and I'm going to put in here a requery. Because this is one of those easy things that once you learn it, it's one line of code. Build event. Me dot require. Oh, I forgot to name the button. And I do this all the time. Alex yells at me. We don't want buttons called Command 11. Click. Nope. Get rid of that. Let's come back over here. Rename the button. Requery button. I used to always not bother with that because I, I always figured, well, I'm, not, I'm never going to call the button from somewhere else. And then you get into some code where you want to call the button from somewhere else. Maybe change its caption, change its color, change its visibility property. And then you got to go and rename your buttons, and it's a pain. Me dot requery that says to the form hey i made some changes requery this list of stuff so if i'm in here and i change this to the 27th and let's see, gotta fix the tab order too in here now i hit requery that 27th goes away it's in the future now 
Okay, that's what reQuery does. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it would be nice to also be able to see the follow-ups in the future. All right, if I want to see in here, let's say, you know, what are tomorrow's follow-ups? So it'd be nice if we had a button, maybe up here, that's show all or show just the ones that are current. In other words, current means up to today. Now, I'm going to show you two methods to do this. One is a simpler method for people who don't want to get heavy into VB and or SQL. And it's going to involve using two queries. All right, we have a follow-up queue right now. And the follow-up queue is just the stuff that's current. We can make another one. Let's call this Control-C, Control-V. Let's call this one follow-up all queue. And we'll modify this guy, design view. And we'll get rid of that follow-up date. So it's basically the same thing. It's the same query, but we're not putting that date criteria on it. We'll see everything. Okay. Now what I'll do is put a checkbox here. Design view. Oh, hang on. I had accidentally typed something in that box, so I had to hit escape to get away from it. All right, design view. We're going to put a checkbox up top here. Checkbox. We'll drop it right there. And let's make the caption say all. And let's use the format painter to make that white so we can actually read it. Okay. And we'll make the name of the checkbox show all. And its default value is going to be no. So by default, when we load this up, that'll be off. And it will just be showing the current stuff. Okay, maybe move that over a little bit. Squeeze it in. there. And we'll leave a little bit of space there. Maybe a little bit more space because that's a date field. And I hate the fact that the little date box shows up there. It should show up over the the field. Okay, save that, close it, we open this up and it looks the same. Okay, now if I click on this box, I want to change the query that this form is based on to follow up all queue. Okay, how do I do that? Design view, come into this guy, event, after update, you could use on click too, but I like after update better. Dot, dot, dot. Now here we're going to say if show all. That means that they've checked the box on. Then me dot record source equals follow up all queue. So we're changing the record source of the form where it gets its data, right? Table or query to that follow up all queue. Otherwise, we're going to set it equal to the original one. Just get rid of the all. Okay, this is the easy way. Save it, close it, close it, open it back up again, and now I can go click, click, see that? Show me all of them, or just the current ones. Okay? Now, the more complicated way for those of you who are familiar with SQL is to not use a second query. And you can simply take this guy, take the SQL out of here, okay, and put that in the VB as the record source. You can put a straight SQL statement in there. I'm not going to do it for the purposes of this class to keep things simple. If you want to learn more about swapping out that record source, I got a video on it. And we also did an if then statement in our VB code. Here's another video on that if you want to learn more about if then. Another popular feature at this point, a lot of times people like to go down this list and go like, okay, this person not today, I'm going to set it to next week. Okay, so do that. And then this person, oh, he's out of town. Okay, I'm going to go next month. Instead of having to click on this guy here, you can use little buttons down on the bottom to simply move this to certain preset dates. Like, there's a, you know, make one for tomorrow, next week, next month. Something like that. I've got another video that I did just recently that covers this in a lot more detail. Go watch this video if you want to learn more. We'll just make a couple simple ones real quick. All right, so design view. And I'm going to move the reQuery button down to the bottom like that. And we'll just do tomorrow, next week, and then in 30 days. So we'll do plus 1, plus 7, plus 30. So I'm going to copy this, copy, paste, slide it up here. And we'll go uh, tomorrow, T-M-R-W. And we can make these guys smaller, too. Let's go 9 point on that text. And we'll shrink that guy down like that. We'll copy this one, copy, paste. We'll go week. 
Slide that up here. And then we'll paste it again. And then we'll do 30 days. Okay. So let's say this one here is going to be called move tomorrow button. Move next week button. And move 30 days button. And yeah, if you know date add, you can do it in the actual calendar month. For me, most of the time when it comes to things like follow-ups and stuff like that, 30 days is good enough. I'm going to call you roughly in a month. Now, if you need to make this an exact month, yeah, use date add. In fact, you know what? Okay, fine. We'll do, we'll do one month. Okay. Move one month. What? Talk me into it. All right, right click on tomorrow, build event, follow up date equals today's date plus one. That's simple. Now it's up to you if you want to make it, you know, so when you keep clicking on it, it goes up a day, up a day, up a day, up a day. I just like a tomorrow button, move it to tomorrow. That's it. All right. But if you want to do like the week button, for example, if you want to make it so that if it's, you know, you keep adding a week to it, that's up to you. Right click build event, follow up date equals date plus seven. Simple enough. And for the month, right click, build event. We're going to say follow up date equals date add. What are we adding? Months. How many? One. So what's the start date right now? There you go. Want to learn more about date add? Sure you do. There you go. <laughs> All right. So let's save our work. Close this. Close this. Open it back up again. Show me everybody. And let's move you tomorrow. You know what would be nice, too, is after I click this button, it moves to the next record. That'd be handy, too. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's come in here. Right after each one of these lines, right, we're going to go enter here. We're going to say do command dot go to record. Now, the next two parameters we don't need. So go comma, comma. Come, 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 yeah, and go AC. Whoops, I lost it because I was busy messing around. <laughs> All right, comma, comma. That's what I get for screwing around, right? AC uh, next. We're going to go to the next record. You can go to the first, last, a specific one. That's what go to is new record, previous. We want to go to the next record. Next record on the current form, basically. Copy that there and there and save it and close it. And now, when I click here, it's going to go tomorrow. Boom, jump to the next record. See that? And you could even have it jump to that field if you want to. If you want to have it go to that specific control. Watch this. Do command dot go to control. What's the control name? Follow up date. Like that. Okay. And we'll copy that and put it there. And there. And yeah, these are starting to get to the point where I might make a single function out of them or a single subroutine, but eh, it's, they're small, so that, that's close enough. All right, but now I can go, all right, next week, next month, tomorrow, tomorrow, next week. See that? And I'll just go right down it. And this makes you more efficient at ignoring and postponing your follow-ups. See? Glad I could help. All right, but there you go for today, folks. Show them all. All right, click on that one, go to a month, and so on. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And there's your fast tip for today, folks. Hope you learned something. We'll see you back for part four. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member?
click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.